Hello YouTube, this is Christian coming to you with another few knife reviews. This time on the table, or this weekend on the table, we will have three knives. So there's a Vorsteep Nightshade, the Maiguran M8 Clear, and the Petrified Fish Havrock. So this particular review today will be, or the one you're looking at right now, will be about the Maiguran M8. If you um, are interested in any of the other knives, please uh, check out my other content as these will be coming up shortly. So this is uh, the Maiguran M8 Clear. And this particular knife I got interested in mostly because of its very clean and straightforward design. I um, had a number of knives from Maiguran in the past, the Pagos and a few others. and. Um, it has been a manufacturer of interest, mostly because they're really trying to do something different. They're trying to build uh, good looking high quality knives. And I found in the past there's uh, always been a few niggles and a few things where I thought, oh, it's not, not quite there yet. Um, but when I saw, uh, saw their latest uh, line of knives, the Gladiator and um, this one, the Glear, I thought, well, this, this looks different and uh, it's not following any any other design line I've seen and um, in the past they have always been kind of price competitive um, some of their knives um, have been sitting in and about the $200 mark where uh, quite easily you could see that uh, other manufacturers would be more sitting in the $300 to $400 uh, dollar mark for, for similar offerings. Now Looking at this uh, now, if you um, get a full titanium frame lock, um, in this case uh, with a blue titanium anodizing, and the plate um, is uh, a little bit special because it's S90V. So for you guys who maybe um, are not the steel nerds that uh, that some of us are, uh, S90V is a super premium knife steel. And um, where it really shines is its um, edge retention. So it is um, really holding an edge for a very long time. That is if the heat treat is done right. Apart from that, um, S90V, so just to give you a little bit of a reference point, probably sits a little bit higher in terms of edge retention with the proper heat treat, a little bit higher than M390 or 20CV. But um, in order to achieve that, it sacrifices some toughness and it also sacrifices uh, some stainless uh, corrosion resistance properties, if you like. So, um, interesting steel. Um, now, whether that is uh, something you find to be desirable in, in your particular situation um, is entirely up to you. S90V is not super easy to sharpen. It is um, a little bit more challenging than, than M390 or 20CV. But um, that being said, if you already have a, a diamond sharpening solution, then you shouldn't have too much trouble getting S90V to, to a really nice and sharp edge. Uh, in my experience, it prefers a little bit more of a toothy edge, uh, but you can, with uh, enough elbow crease, uh, put a really nice and fine edge on S90V as well, and uh, it will perform really, really well. So, looking at this, um, this knife um, comes in with a plate of 3.75 inches, so it is on, on the rather long side. And if you want to compare it, let's just for comparison's sake, we put a 3.5 inch Chavez Redencion next to it. And you can see straight away how the plate is a fair bit longer. Then next one would be the Katsu. And um, I will bring that up, um, those two, because uh, they're both. Chinese, I believe, Chinese made knives um, that are in a similar price point and are attractive, attractive for a number of reasons but have a number of shortcomings as well. So 
that would be that and then we have the giant mouse Ace Jutland and you can see quite interestingly enough while the plate on the Jutland is just 3.3, 3.4 inches uh, the overall length here uh, is almost the same to the Jutland which is a knife I carry uh, a fair bit so in, in terms of carry profile interestingly enough despite its 3.75 plate it is actually rather slim and compact as far as the pocket feel if you like is concerned so you get two methods of deployment uh, with this knife uh, your flipper tap here that's a bit of a pocket poker so it stands out a fair bit but um, as a secondary or perhaps primary depending where your preferences lie um, means of deployment you have your some stud over there and as far as deployment is concerned and closing action there's actually not much left to be desired in this particular knife it just flips and button thumb flips uh, really really nicely so action feels tuned and it is a heavy plate so the slightest of of shakes will close it and I have no doubt whatsoever that this knife will wear in really nicely whether you do like a satin finish uh, or rather a bead blasted finish on on a knife like that uh, that's another question I mean uh, it, it complements the look and the style of the knife um, it's just not going to stay like that for a very long time bead blasted finishes uh, have the tendency to mar up rather quickly and uh, show if you want to put it positively show patina relatively early other than that um, you, you get a fuller uh, that is cosmetical too because um, as far as deployment is concerned you really don't get enough of that fuller exposed to really make use of it as a method of deployment so it is there and um, it looks all right I personally feel uh, we, we could have done without that fuller but it, it doesn't bother me all too much you have a full flat grind so nothing fancy going on in terms of grind it's just a very nicely executed good looking grind and as you can see you have a forward finger choil that uh, also serves well as a sharpening choil and it's far enough from from the radius of the grind there to give you plenty of sharpening sharpenings without producing any kind of smile at the edge where the material would then go into a bigger thickness so that's that's all good in terms of holding it it's it's a comfortable knife to hold um, you have your forward choked up position right there that works really really well it gives you a nice comfortable spot also with the jimping which is rather well exe executed as you can see there it's not sharp or anything along these lines um, and and the crown of the of the jimping is fine enough to give you a little bit of grip albeit not excessively it's it's not overly grippy it, it isn't gonna rip the skin of your of your thumb so it's a well done jimping and um, they also include that little chamfered area there where your thumb uh, sits in and, and, and this also gives you a little bit of a dig in spot if you want to put it this way for your thumb to actually rest in when you're when you're holding the knife when we flip it around you can see it's a relatively straightforward design there as well it's rather boxy by shape and uh, I personally like that simplistic straight pocket clip as far as appearance is concerned uh, it just complements the knife nicely in my view other than that um, 
the edges are knocked down rather nicely. You've got a chamfer running all the way around and your lock bar relief is on the outside. Looking at your centering, you can see clearances are fairly close and it is perfectly centered. Now the micro milling on this knife is rather fine. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer. Uh, yep, there we go. So you can see it's kind of a diamond pattern and that is rather well done. Your hardware as per usual, unfortunately you've got, well, fortunately you've got T8 on the, on the pivot, but everything else on this knife is custom T6 hardware. I personally feel they could have gone to T8 and listened to the community, which would have got them some bonus points, I believe, but that's all right. So there's no um, reversible pocket clip on that. So it is uh, tip up, right hand carry only, and we do not have any provision for a lanyard, which is a bit of a bummer for me, but on the other hand, not a big deal. Mostly because it's not a pocket clip where you would say, okay, that's deep carry. You can see that a fair bit of the knife would be sticking out of your pocket, and then you have plenty to grab onto without compressing the pocket clip if you try to pull it out. So that's fine. This is actually a knife where I wouldn't be too worried about putting a lanyard on. Now, there are a few things that are not quite perfect. And maybe you have already picked up on it. If I go a little bit closer on on this one. You can see how in that area here in the anodizing there are some silvery spots. And this is a knife that hasn't been carried at all. So you can see that it won't take an awful lot of time for this to develop kind of a spotty surface. Personally, I believe it's uh, because at the top of these little pyramids of that little micro milling diamond pattern, there is not a lot of material at the very top of it to uh, give the anodizing any effect. So an anodizing layer usually grows 90 degree to its surface. There's not an, a lot of 90 degree surface on top of a pyramid where, where an anodizing layer could, could grow or where, uh, in the case of titanium, uh, that would have an effect on the color. And I believe that is uh, the problem here. Anodizing titanium works really well with radius surfaces, so when you have more of a rounded feature. But when you have sharp corners, then the anodizing in titanium, especially on the edges, rubs off a little bit faster. So I'm, I'm not too bothered by it, but um, if you're buying a knife like this, even if you're just paying $170, which by the way is in my opinion a really good price for, for a knife like that, um, you, you kind of expect it to look like new, not to have blemishes when it comes out of the box or, or looks as if it has been worn a number of times. So if you went for this particular knife I would recommend that you maybe go for the silver plain titanium scales and shy away from the color anodized ones. Uh, they, they will not look even for a very long time in this case. Also of note have a look at the some studs that's an, another bit. They look a little bit blotchy. They're certainly different in color from top surface to their side surface. It almost looks, I mean, in anodizing titanium there's no 
no dye involved whatsoever. It is just an anodizing current with titanium that produces a certain color. So either something went wrong here in terms of application of constant current and, and voltage or they tried to use some kind of dye but that looks a little bit plotchy. It doesn't look like, like a very good anodizing on those some studs. Last thing on, for me on this particular knife and um, I have to compare it to an issue that I had with the Katsu. And funny enough these, these both of these knives I got because I got attracted by them because they seem to be incredibly good good value for money. So this is a, an S35 VN steel and it comes with a convex concave compound grind and you have full titanium with chopped fiber inlays and micro milled titanium. Now this particular knife uh, also you could get at around 165 US dollars which made it really really interesting for me and I really wanted to have that knife just because you, you don't get a lot of knives where you have that concave convex grind on it. You get flat and concave but the convex bit it's really you get it from from the Japanese manufacturers most of the time. So that that made it very attractive. That knife had a problem when it came and the problem was that the pocket clip here was just not having enough of a spacing in between the scale in the inside of the pocket clip which made it impossible to to really get into regular jeans. It would just jam and so I had to space out that pocket clip a little bit to make it work. Interestingly enough this particular knife features the exact same problem. It is just a very very tiny gap. And so I went down and, and measured it and checked what, what's going on there and so that gap is uh, 1.75 millimeters. And that's very little. And if you compare it to something like let's say a giant mouse pocket clip there, then you can see maybe if I get both both at the same time into into the picture how much more space you have in that pocket clip. Yeah? So that makes a huge difference in terms of how well your knife goes in and out of your pocket. And this this just jams up. And for the life of me I cannot quite understand why a knife manufacturer goes through the trouble of coming up with a design that's actually really beautiful, that's very very clean, straightforward, has a lot of appeal for a lot of people I would imagine and then do something like that with the pocket clip. And I'll have to have a look at that and maybe, maybe I will be able to put a spacer in between the scale and and the milled out pocket for the pocket clip to, to get it a millimeter higher. So what I found is if you look at some other knives with milled pocket clips like for instance the Chavez as well you can see how, how much space you really want. So a rule of thumb would be that between three and four millimeters is where you where you have a sweet spot where it will fit most most trousers. But with 1.75, especially with a knife like this, uh, full titanium scale, 3.75 inches, they, they did a fair amount of, of milling on the inside. Can I get you to sharpen please camera? There you go. You can see there's a fair amount of, of milling. There's a big pocket milling inside of that which kind of reduces the weight of the of the knife but still you have a relatively heavy knife and you're gonna put it 
somewhere where you don't want it to fall out. So you, the pocket clip is quite essential. And I don't know how many knife reviews I've seen on so many different channels. And the knife manufacturers should be well aware that the pocket clip is always something that reviewers and customers are concerned about. So spent a little bit more time looking at that and I'm, I'm not sure, I mean I've, I haven't, haven't seen an awful lot of channels out there who point that out but this pocket clip is in the current state if you're wearing regular jeans it's unusable. It's just not good enough, right? And it's not like you're talking about a Spyderco or um, you know an, another very popular knife where you could get quite easily, let's say an Ontario Red or something along these lines, where you could quite easily get an aftermarket pocket clip and just replace it, right? So you would have to either either modify this one or custom make one or not carry it at all, which for me kind of defeats the purpose of it. And if you want to save Queen, fine. It's it's a rather unique design and um, I have to say I, I love the design so much that I'm just going to keep it, mostly because it's it's relatively unique and I don't have a lot of S90 um, knives in my collection anyway, so I'm, I'm very likely to keep it, but it will not go in the pocket a lot. It's because it won't go in the pocket, right? So uh, here's my take on, on this. This is overall action, selection of knife steel, selection of materials, price, execution of some of the features is done really, really well. Unfortunately, it's being let down in a number of areas. And you could say, well, look, Christian, this is a special knife. It's S90 for $170. Where are you going to find that one? And I kind of see that. But at the same time, you can probably get a lot of knives in M390 or 20CV in that price range and under. And is S90V for EDC pocket knives really so desirable and I would say hmm it is interesting it's an interesting super steel it is probably a little bit more expensive because it isn't used that much you don't see it around every corner it has a special flavor to it but none of the traits of this steel actually make it all that much more desirable and the reason is, in M390, you get almost the same amount of edge retention, you get better corrosion resistance, and you can get better toughness, right? And this is if S90 is hardened to the proper hardness. And I haven't done any Rockwell testing on, on this particular knife, but from what I've been hearing and what the manufacturer has been disclosing, it's a little bit on the softer side of the spectrum where you would get S90. Softer, not soft, right? So that means for me, M390 in an EDC knife would still be a preferred choice. And so if I can, you know, get a lot of M390 knives in that price bracket then um, the fact that this is S90 is not really something other than that it is a novelty for a lot of people maybe um, that's not a point. If it was 15 we or if it was Vanax or if it was Magna Cut um, it would be a slightly different story. I would clearly say, well, there are a lot of uh, desirable features in those that I might be drawn to, right? So if I want higher corrosion resistance with good edge retention, Van X is the way to go, maybe. Um, if I'm more after toughness 
and still having good edge retention yeah magna cut would be it yeah and if i want absolute crazy edge retention and be willing to sacrifice some of the other aspects then 15v would be the one to go to but all of that would carry a different price tag so s90 is none of those it is a notch above m390 in terms of edge retention otherwise it, it sacrifices in in every other area so good on them for actually putting an s90 knife out there um, it's not as much of a bargain if you ask me if you look closely right so in, and there's a reason why perhaps you can get it at that price and I said the same thing about um, the katsu um, which is an interesting knife and it was uh, sitting there at $170 and I just couldn't say no but really would I pay much more for it in its current state no it had the same pocket clip issue and um, if you want to go premium then you got to get that right if you want to sell a knife like that and celebrate huge successes with it with your design then you got to get these things right you got to get the pocket clip right right and you got to get the anodizing right really and well I, I don't mind um, the issue with the with the silvery spots on the on the scales as much but if you want to serve into the premium market you got to get that right too right so that's my opinion on the Maguron M8 clear it's a lovely looking design absolutely it has a very nice action but unfortunately there's uh, a number of issues with the knife that actually kill it for me so here's my two cents and um, yeah feel free to hop on to my other content I've got a few more knives coming up uh, within the next couple of days and I hope you enjoyed the content all right you all have a good weekend and see you around bye